Hey everyone, this is Luke Myers here. I uh, wanted to make a quick video. Um, we have here is the uh, 15 minute chart of the ES, S&P 500 E-minis. Um, and uh, we had a pretty big week. We had Fed, uh, Fed speak on uh, is that Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. And uh, it was a, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing. I um, just wanted to kind of go over real quickly, you know, what happened, uh, some of the trades that I made, and um, uh, for the week. So uh, basically, uh, last Thursday, um, we had a long signal, um, and as you can see here, here's, I'll zoom in on the past uh, two days, this is uh, last Thursday and last Friday, um, we got a signal I entered. Uh, right about here where this white circle is um, at about 7.45, 8 o'clock in the morning, somewhere around there. I set about a three-point stop um, and it actually pulled down. Uh, I hit the 200 EMA. Um, wasn't sure if it was going to hold or not. It was a little bit of a nervous moment. Sure enough, the 200 held and then started rallying up. Um, it came up, uh, looked like it was going to break out overnight. Uh, ended up pulling down uh, the next day, uh, but may, did in fact not break, start a new downtrend. In fact, uh, rallied up on uh, some kind of economic report. Um, basically, there was a nice new trend. Um, this uh, trend last was actually pretty much almost sideways for for a number of days. Uh, it actually didn't look like it was going to do anything. I actually was almost thinking it was going to fail, except here on Monday. Uh, came in Monday and saw we were pushing up strong right against um, overhead resistance. And uh, that made me feel nice. Uh, we kept hitting it, took out a lot of supply, a lot of orders. Um, and then overnight, we just we finally broke through. As you can see, there was a lot of momentum as, it, as it, that uh, overhead uh, resistance broke. Um, the following day we ran up um, and we ran up you know pretty nice that was uh, Tuesday um, we kind of went sideways for a little bit we drifted down in the morning of Fed day for maybe it was a rumor maybe somebody buying ahead of the, the Fed speak uh, but some big orders came in you can see the volume here and spiked us up um, we, I got in about 1410 uh, the, the the prior Thursday, about fourteen ten the prior Thursday, and I actually uh, by the time we hit up here we were almost pushing fourteen forty for a potential thirty points of uh, profit, but uh, we excuse me, but uh, uh, the Fed was coming out now typical trends short term trends like this are anywhere from 20 to 40 points. So we know we're already locking in 30 points. It, it would be a surprise if it was if it would rally further. Uh, just because I it's, it's rare to see a, a short-term trend last longer than 40 points. So to, this was kind of telling me that there was a, it was a possibility that it could keep rallying, but there was also a possibility that it was really done. Uh, you can see there was some divergence here. Um, and that uh, was telling us that, uh, in fact, it was kind of oversold and it was ready to turn around potentially. So what I did was is I moved my stop all the way up to uh, 1430, uh, actually 1430 and like and a half, just to cover commissions. Um, and you can see uh, the, the Fed got some volatility, cracked to the downside. A bunch of other stops got hit. A bunch of other people got out. Um, anyway, this uh, trend. I got out at 14.30 and a half uh, for about a 20-point uh, uh, win uh, in uh, five days, uh, for basically a week. Um, and then uh, today, um, actually, I, well, I waited, um, and it, 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 I wasn't getting a signal. It was late into midnight. I was uh, asleep by then. I figured I'll wait till the next day. It'll be good volume in the morning anyway. Came in at six. Saw that it had already cracked, but I could see there was this divergence and bullish momentum that I was basically turning around. So I didn't go short. Instead, I went long. 
Uh, I got stopped out this morning for minus three points. Uh, no big deal. Quickly turned around. Uh, went short again. Um, and I currently have a position on. Um, locked in right here at uh, 14, 20, uh, 26, 14, 20, 26 and a quarter uh, short. So currently up about 10 points. We'll see what happens. Uh, see if we can get another 20 point run out of this or if it's going to reverse on us. Um, if we're going to go ahead and look at the uh, hourly chart. Um, it's looking pretty deep here. Um, it's looking like we could get a reversal but anything can happen but if momentum turns around the way it looks like it could um, we're probably going to get a bounce to the upside but again who knows that's just my thoughts on it based on what momentum looks like anyway I kind of wanted to go over just real briefly um, how this uh, the 1530 that's the red line and the green line how effective this can be on a daily chart um, so I want to pull up a daily now the, the, the guy I got this from uh, his name is uh, Jim uh, Rochebach and he runs a website called www.investmentmodels.com. Uh, he was recently in, a, in an interview with um, uh, Michael Covell, uh, the author of Trend Following. Uh, and in the interview, he talks about his uh, method that has beat the market for the past 30 years. Uh, and he, he didn't disclose a, a lot of details, but he did say that it's essentially the same as a 15 and 30 EMA. And he said anybody who goes out there that wants to, to manage their portfolio in such a manner can do so. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go over how people can manage their retirement accounts uh, in, in such a manner. It's, it's very valuable insurance. Um, I just want to pull this off here and uh, show you. Uh, so what he does, or what he recommends, is that any time price breaks above the 30 exponential moving average, that's this green line, you start getting ready to look for a cross, where the red line is crossing over and above the, the green line. Uh, the faster moving average is crossing above the slower moving average. When that happens, you get a bull signal. As soon as you get that cross, we'll say right in here, uh, you want to go, uh, you want to go long. Uh, basically, you move all your money out of cash and into an index fund. Uh, you can. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can go into um, the S&P 500 uh, Vanguard uh, mutual fund, or if you want higher returns, you can go with a long-only double leveraged um, mutual fund. Uh, now, if you go to his website, he has his uh, track record on there. It's pretty stellar. Uh, he has uh, an average annualized return of 17.5% over the past 30 years. Now, this guy was in cash for most of the 2008 crash. So anyone who has lost some money in the 2008 crash can think of where their money was before the crash. Think if you were using such a system that told you when to get out and move to cash. You go out, move to cash and then it tells you when to get back in. As you all know, we're sitting on a hundred, basically 100% retur uh, return. The market's uh, had 100% return since the lows of the 2008 market crash. So whatever your money was uh, before the crash, you could have almost doubled your money by now. Um, and that's really the power of this, of this type of trend following. Now, with, by using a 1530, EMAs on a daily chart for a retirement account, he does not go short. Now, someone could if they wanted to, but he does not. Um, and I think for a retirement account, I think that's pretty, uh, pretty wise, but it's up to anyone's own opinion. But basically, he just goes to cash and then switches back into indexes. Switches from index back to cash, and he's been doing it for 30 years. Um, you can see this would have got you in, uh, what is this, early 2000 and uh, 2011, yeah, early 2000, late 2011, early 2012, you got in at 1250, 12, still say 1260. Uh, you would have been in for till about April, uh, end middle of April when you finally would have got a sell signal. Would have got you at about 1381, uh, a little over 100 points in the S and P. It would have bobbed around a little bit and then basically collapsed through the summer. 
uh, you would have got back in mm, right about in July, about 13.45, 13.50. Uh, you would have rode it back up all the way to the 14.50 highs. You would have got out probably about 1400, 14.20. Uh, you would have been in cash again, and then got, just recently got back in right about 1400, uh, 1410 maybe, uh, maybe the first week in December, about a week ago, um, and you'd still be holding the position now. You might have had a small loss here in May of uh, of this past year, depending on if you took this signal, uh, which you probably should have. But this, the the loss would have been very minimal, uh, maybe half of a percent, one of one percent. Because again, you're not using leverage here; it's just an index fund. It's a way to protect yourself. Um, so that's the basics on how the 1530 can be used on a daily chart uh, to manage an IRA. Uh, that's who I got it from. Uh, if you all want to see more information on it, uh, you can check out his website on investmentmodels.com. Highly recommend it. Um, and then, of course, if you want to trend follow on high time frames in Forex or currencies or commodities, stocks or anything, you could also use this system. Uh, it's very responsive and very smooth. Um, because of the, the general type of volatility that you get on daily charts, uh, it tends to pair well um, on that type of a time frame. Anyway, that's uh, pretty much all for now. Um, I hope you all have a good weekend, and uh, I will see you guys in the trading room. Take care.